Another relaxing morning day, sitting on the couch with not much to do. You hear a knock at the door. A pile of mail comes through the slit on the door, one by one, pulling on the floor at least seven letters. You see these letters falling from your comfortable couch, sat up in the living room. You stand up and walk to the door to pick up the letters. As you shuffle through the pile of mail, you come across one letter addressed to you. This letter has a seal on it. What a weird looking letter this is. A wax seal. The only place you've ever seen one of these was in a movie. This letter is addressed to you. As you walk back over to the couch, you lay other letters down and keep this unique looking letter to open. As you break the seal to the letter, you feel the excitement start to build. A letter to you. You never get letters. But this one is clearly special. As you open the letter and read. We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted to the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The smile on your face gets so big. This is amazing that you are able to learn from an awesome school like this. You never knew anything about this school, but this letter is clearly to you. You have always been adventurous. The fact that now they decide to send you means nothing, but another adventure to go on is exciting. As you call your family in excitement, you tell them you have been accepted to Hogwarts and your family looks at each other in amazement. They sit you down to tell you, get comfortable. We will now tell you a story. Your great-great-grandfather used to have some weird things happen to him. He had a knack for everything under the sun and was so outgoing. We all knew there was something special about him. He kept it to himself though. He would travel all around the world and talk about things no normal person would. He kept a journal This journal he wrote, everything that he did. He was very adventurous like you. We are not surprised you take after him a lot. You resemble him in ways. We want you to know that you are special no matter what. But we heard the name Mogul before. We are just ordinary people. You are different and we have prepared ourselves for this day years ago. Upstairs in the attic, we kept a chest of all his belongings. Find that chest and you will find more answers to what you are looking for. As you finish the talk with your family, you head upstairs with round big eyes, thinking of the future that could be. You know nothing about magic or wizardry But even the word wizardry sounds cool. As you walk upstairs, each step seems to be more and more mysterious. You never go up to the attic, but your curiosity is building. As you open the door inside, this massive room 
dusty and filled with cobwebs, brown and gray, hanging from the ceiling. You see a big leather chest with rivets all around. A big button on the front to push. You grab the chest by the handle and pull it in the middle of the room so you can see all around it. As you touch it, you can see the dust gather in front of your hand, but the leather is soft and well made. The details of the rivets and design are amazing. You take your finger and you push on the front of the chest. The chest latch swings open and you grab the sides of the chest and open the top. Inside this chest, you can see a journal. Under the journal, there's some clothing. You grab the journal and open it. On the first page of the journal, you read, Dear Journal, I have been going through a lot of weird things lately, and I felt like I needed to write them down. Just the other day, I got mad because I couldn't find my socks. I imagined my socks finding me. And out behind the couch, my socks snaked their way to me next to my shoes. It was weird. I never told anyone because I don't think they would believe me. But I will start writing in this journal so I never forget. As you read more and more of this journal, you come across chapters called Hogwarts Acceptance Letter. As you smile ear to ear knowing that you were accepted to this school too, you read on. After getting this letter in the mail, I finally got everything I need. I followed the checklist and found the street in downtown, it took me three tries to find that magical street, but when I got there, it had everything I needed. On Main Street downtown, there's a magical street behind the old cauldron shop. After sitting near the area for hours, I seen a giant man, at least the size of two men tall and five men wide. His name was Haggard. He guided me in the cauldron shop with another young man and lady. The cauldron shop was more like a bar with people inside laughing and singing. Behind this bar is a room with a brick wall. Touch the four quadrants and this wall will open up. As time goes on, you put the journal down and reach back into the chest. A long robe in the chest. You pull out. And underneath that, a long stick. Well, a second glance. It's a wand. A brown wood wand. As you reach down to grab the wand, you pick it up and wave it above you. As you wave it, your fingers start to turn warm. And when you wave in the air, you see red streaks coming from the wand, sparkling and shining out. You have never seen magic or anything like this before. You knew things very fortunate to you has happened before, but a display of magic like this? It has to be magic. As you grab the journal and tuck the wand into your pants pocket, you get up and you walk back down the stairs to your room to read more of your acceptance letter sent from the school.
as you walk to your room at the bottom of the letter is a list of items you will need. All students must be equipped with a quadrant, a owl, cat, or toad. Luckily, you have a cat. Your cat's name is Salem. Salem has been with you for years. You found him when he was a kitten behind a street. As you grab everything you might need, you start to load it up on your little traveling trolley. You even grab the chest from the attic and bring it downstairs. You are almost ready to leave to school. On the letter it says, come anytime once you get this letter, we will be waiting. As you sit there and think, you have no reason to wait any longer. You are prepared to leave. As you grab all the things that you need, you walk to the front of the house to start setting up to go. As you head out the house with your journal and wand in hand, you finally reach downtown Main Street in order to look for the building with the cauldron sign on it. Thanks to the journal, its location was very easy to find for you. As you walk into the shop, everyone is talking and laughing and drinking. It looks like a fun place. It kind of reminds you of an old western bar. The ones you, that you see in movies. As you walk through the bar, the bartender says, New student? You look at him and say yes to Hogwarts. He calmly lifts his hand and points to the back room. As you walk to the back room, you come across a brick wall and you pull out your journal. This must be the brick wall your great great grandfather was talking about. You see the four dots on the brick wall you must push. One, two, three, and four. You say to yourself as you push the brick wall. Instantly, the brick starts to open to reveal a street. A street full of people all wearing shawls and witch hats, long coats, and shiny shoes. As you walk down this busy street lined with cobblestone, you see the most amazing sights. Flying owls, people doing magic. You see a pet shop, a clothing store, a wand shop. It's so exciting to be here, it's amazing. In the chest that was left to you were some coins, special looking coins that were said to be used as currency when going to the magic shops. Different from regular money. You grabbed a good amount before you left and left the rest of them in the chest that you'll be taking. While walking down this cobblestone street, you come across a broom store but these brooms don't look like regular brooms. These are magical ones. As you open the door and walk inside, you hear, Welcome to Brooms and Things. We have all the best and fastest brooms, utility brooms, and even racing brooms. Are you a new student? We have been getting a lot of students today. You reply to the shop teller, yes, you are. And on my letter of acceptance, it said I needed a broom, an entry level one to enter. Do you have one for students? Why, yes, yes we do. Here, look at this one. 
You can pick the wood or the color you want, but these brooms are standard, especially for new students. These are all good and reliable ones. As you get better control, you can upgrade your broom. This bad boy right here, this is a Nimbus 2000. But they won't let you in with this one, especially as a new student. This is for the more advanced. As you look at the Nimbus 2000, you can see the difference in the way it's built. It looks more like a sports car than a kitchen broom. The ones that you have to get, they look like a kitchen broom. You look at the teller and you ask them how much it would be for the standard broom. The shop teller says three gold. So you reach in your pocket and you hand him three gold pieces. He grabs your standard broom to the back and wraps it up in a white cloth with a red ribbon. You politely tell the teller thank you as you grab your broom and you walk out. As you walk out, your eyes never leave the Nimbus 2000. One day you say to yourself, one day that broom will be yours. You have now finished all of your shopping on your list for magical items. It's a good thing that your great great grandfather left you a lot of stuff. As you head back to gather all your belongings, the faster you can get back to home, you can leave for your school and get settled in. As you reach your home again, it's time to gather all your belongings. You still have time before it gets dark and the last train is still available, but you will have to hurry to get going. As you grab your cart packed with your belongings, the chest, your broom, your cat, the travel case for your cat and some snacks. You tell your family that you will be off and that the adventure awaits you. They look at you and smile. They have been preparing for this day for so long. As you wave goodbye, the taxi your family called is now pulling up to pick you up. As a taxi driver opens his door and walks around to help you load up all your belongings. You tell him the train station, please. He says, okay. As you get in the taxi cab, still looking at your family, waving goodbye. You keep waving until your house is no longer in sight. As you drive down the road, curious where to go. You open the Hogwarts letter and it says Terminal 9 and 3 fourths. That's kind of peculiar to you. You open up your journal to do some more research and you see that the journal it says you need to walk up to the brick between these two terminals. Whatever that means. As time passes, the sun is slowly starting to fall. You finally reach the train station. Unpack all your belongings from the taxi and start on your way to the terminal you need to depart from. As you finally get to the terminal between 9 and 10, you're not sure what to do. So you stand there in the middle. Just for a few minutes, you're confused. As nothing's happening. Did the letter mean these pillars? Or do you just stand here until something happens? A few more minutes pass and nothing happens with you 
So you walk up to the pillar and the brick and you reach out to touch it. As you reach to touch it, you feel no resistance and your hand passes right through the brick. This must be it, the magical doorway. So you grab your cart full of your belongings and slowly push it through the magical doorway. As you go through on the other side, you see a train. This train must be the one you're looking for. It even says Hogwarts Express. Not a moment after you pass through that magical doorway, you hear the train horn sound. All aboard. You just didn't make it in time. As you scuttle along, pushing your cart, it's time to go. The attendant that's working starts loading your belongings into the luggage cabin and gives you a piece of paper with a number on it. This piece of paper says that your belongings will be delivered to your room at the dorm. As you walk away and up the stairs of the train, you and Salem can hear the sounds of the engine rumbling in the background. As you find a nice cabin to sit in, you take a seat. In this cabin, there's one of two benches. And behind you, you close a small cabin door with the window on it. You and Salem have this whole cabin to yourself. You are so happy. You finally are on your way. This was a lot of preparation, but you are almost there. As the train slowly starts to move, gathering speed, the slow rocking of the train back and forth is soothing. As you leave the train terminal, the train starts to go faster. As the sound of the train gets louder and louder. In this cabin that you're sitting in is very nice and the benches are really soft. The cabin design is great craftsmanship. And in this cabin, you have a nice big window to look out of. How fun this is. As time passes, you finally reach your destination. Over the intercom, you hear, We have now arrived at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please grab all your belongings. All new students will be meeting in a dining room. As you grab Salem, and start to head on your way. You walk down the train steps to view the school for the first time. The school is huge. It sits on a big mountain. It's an old looking castle. The stone reaches from the floor to the ceiling and the lights in the castle looks beautiful. It's very daunting, especially with the moon overhead and the stars shining above it. In the distance, you can hear Hagrid. All right then, first year students this way. New students to Hogwarts will be heading to the dining area. We're all gonna eat dinner tonight. We will be having introductions tomorrow and you'll be assigned your homeroom. Follow me.
along with all the other students, you get into rowboats. Haggard leading the way, you row across a big dark black lake. Around 50 students in all, rowing down this dark foggy lake to reach the Hogwarts castle. Finally, reaching the school, you walk up the stairs into the dining hall. Everyone have a seat. Let's eat together. Find a place where you can sit. As you and Salem walk into the dining hall, you find a seat, one of many seats with empty plates in front of you. As you sit, Salem walks between your legs and lays down under your chair. In the front of the hall, you hear, <clears throat> We are all here to celebrate. Welcome first year students. Please feast. And tomorrow, we will go over sorting ceremonies. As all the seats are now filled with students talking and laughing, instantly, the food appears on the plates in front of you. All of your most favorite foods appear. Grilled chicken, grilled steak, tacos, pizza, ham, turkey, macaroni, and cheese. Anything you've ever wanted is here for you to eat. All made by magic. As you eat your delicious food, you start to get full. And as time passes, all the plates of the students around you are now empty. And everyone's getting sleepy. As Haggard speaks to the students, he says, I hope you all enjoyed that masterful feast. We will now be guiding you to your dorms. Look at your acceptance letter. On that letter, follow the directions that appear. Each student has a different location. You may go to bed now, and tomorrow we will be sorting you into the houses using the sorting hat. Sleep good. Tomorrow will be another day. As you pull out your acceptance letter and follow the directions, it guides you upstairs with magic. As you walk upstairs, you head to the left down the corridor. There is a room on the right. As you step inside this room and open up the door, you see one single bed that sits in this room. Not much here except a table, a bed, and a window to look out of. But as you see in the corner, your luggage is sitting there. They even laid out Salem's cat bed. You take off your shoes and you get ready to go to bed. You lie down on your comfortable looking bed. You feel so good from eating all that good food that you are starting to get sleepy. Your eyes are starting to shut and your mind is starting to wonder thinking about all the adventures you will have here in the future. Little by little, your arms and legs get tired and they start to rest. Your mind is now going blank and there is no reason for you to stay up any longer as tomorrow will be a new day. As your mind starts to fade, slowly my words disappear as you begin to fall deeper and deeper into your lucid dreams.